Hey, a friend, Chris here from WhiteLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Well, it's the last week of 2022. Next week, it's a brand new year, and it seems as good a time as any to perhaps take a look at all the projects that you've accumulated over the past year. And if any of those projects could be considered complete, finished, ready to be archived away, let's take some time to consolidate and clean up those projects. So number one, they are fully self-contained. They have every file that they need copied to the project itself. So you can open that project way into the future and it will open as expected. But also number two, let's get rid of any files that are just extra, any bloat that's just taking up space. Let's do this. Obviously we have an empty project in front of us, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna import some audio files into this project. We're gonna load some software instruments and then we're going to save the project. And this way we can examine that very first line of defense that Logic offers you for future proofing your projects when you archive them. And really, it all starts with that very first save dialog. So let's go ahead and squash up the logic window just a tad so we can reveal this exports folder that's living on my desktop. And you can see that this exports folder is populated with many different audio files. I'm going to select all the audio files using command A and drag them right into my project. All right, so let's create some new tracks. Let's squash things up a bit and even expand the waveform view so we can see all of the audio files that have been populated into this project. And let's also go ahead and load an instance of Sampler. And let's open Sampler, go right into the presets, go down to factory, and we'll load a classical piano sound. Okay, great. So let's close Sampler, let's close the library, and let's bring our attention to Logic here. Okay, so we're just gonna imagine this is a complete project, but weirdly enough, we haven't saved this project yet. So let's go up to File, and let's go down to Save As. So from here, I'm going to select my desktop to save this project. I'm going to name this project our archive example. I'm going to organize my project as a folder as that's what I prefer. But obviously, if you prefer to organize your projects as a package, go right ahead. Choose whichever file type works best for your workflow. But what I really wanna bring your attention to is this lower half of the save dialog that offers us the opportunity to choose which kind of files we're going to copy to the project folder or package. We can choose to copy any relevant audio files that are being referenced in our project, which we can see it's almost entirely audio files. We can also copy sampler audio data, Alchemy, Ultrabeat, any Space Designer impulse responses, movie files, as well as Apple Sound Library content. So at a minimum, I at least recommend that you copy any audio files to your projects when you save them. This will ensure that all the audio files that I've imported into this project will be copied to the project. So if I delete that exports folder from my desktop, all those files are safe and sound with the project. I also personally choose to include all Apple Sound Library content, which will include sampler, Alchemy and Ultra B audio data, as well as Space Designer impulse responses. And my thinking here is, is perhaps sometime in the future, I might be working on a Mac that doesn't have the Apple Sound Library content installed on it. And lastly, I personally never copy movie files to my projects because number one, the movie files I work with, I don't tend to use well into the future. But also movie files can take up a lot of space, so I prefer not to copy them over and over if I don't have to. But for this video, I'm actually going to deselect all these options and save. So what exactly happened when I saved and I didn't copy these file types? Well. Let's open the finder. Let's go right down to the dock. Let's open the finder, take a look at the desktop at our archive example folder, which again, this is how I structured my project for this project that we're looking at. We have the archive example project file as well as an audio files folder, but it's completely empty. Even though we have all these audio files in the project, this audio files folder has nothing contained within it. And that's because this project is looking not at its own project folder for those files, but instead it's looking at the exports folder for all of its audio. And this can quickly become a headache in the future. Just to illustrate, let's actually quit logic. So I'll save and I'll quit. We can see our archive example, audio files, nothing's in there. Let's take this exports folder, which is the folder right here on the desktop. And I'm going to right click or hold control and click to move it to the trash. All right, from here, let's open our project once more and let's see what happens. Oh no, Logic can't find these files for our project. And now Logic needs some help for identifying what to do in this situation. Now, obviously in this case, we want to find those files. We know they're in the trash, but maybe in the future you won't know where they are. 
So we can either tell Logic to search the internal drive and any connected external drives for those files, and it will just automatically seek those files out if it can find them, or we can help Logic locate those files by manually searching our Max hard drive, any external drives for those files that are missing, or we can just tell Logic to skip this file, but check it out. There's another file I can't find because I've deleted all the files. Or we can just ask Logic to skip all the missing file announcements because we don't know where those files are. They're long gone. Well, in this case, let's actually have Logic search for these files and see what it turns up. Well, check it out. Logic has actually found several of these files on an external drive in multiple places. So in that case, let's just click OK and see what happens. All right, it looks like everything is almost as good as new. But check it out, this very first file that I skipped, well, there's no audio there anymore. But aside from that, we found audio files for all the rest of the audio in this project. But just remember, even if we save, if we go back to the Finder and go to that audio files folder in the Finder for our project, and I'll expand this by holding Option and clicking and dragging the right corner of the Finder window, there's still no audio files saved to the project folder itself. So we could run into this problem again in the future. Okay, we've identified the first line of defense for future proofing your project starts with that very first save dialog and choosing the different file types that you want to copy to your project folder or package. But what do you do when you didn't choose those different file types when you initially saved your project? Well, one way we could go about this is by going up to File, go to Project Management, and then choosing Consolidate. And look at that. Looks very familiar, right? With the Consolidate Project Management option, we can actually say, hey, Logic, uh, I forgot to copy all these different file types that I wanted to copy to my project. Can you please do that now? So I'm gonna do this right now. Just remember that we have mostly audio files, but we also have a sampler instrument that uses samples to perform that particular instrument. So let's click okay right now to copy all these different file types to the project. All right, I'm gonna use command S to save. And let's take a look at the finder. Well, look at that. Here are just about all the audio files that should have been saved with the project originally. We use the consolidate menu to copy them to the project folder. So now this project will not refer to other folders across our Mac or external drives for these files. It will look at itself for the necessary files it needs. And if we take a look right beneath the audio files folder, we have a brand new folder called samples. And this is for the classical piano, which are all the different samples that sampler will use to perform that particular instrument. Those have also been saved to the project. All right, so everything's perfect now, right? We can archive this project away and we're good to go. Well, almost. I mean, assuming that we don't change this project at all, we don't add anything, we're in good shape. However, let's go back to the desktop and let's select this other audio file that I have saved on my desktop and let's drag it into our project. Clearly, I've added a full mix to this project and we can see the stereo waveform. And if we go up to file, and go down to save or use command S. Let's take a look in the finder. Let's take a look at our archive example folder, audio files, and take a look. Notice that this file is called feels like home master version two. If we look in the audio files folder, there is no feels like home stereo wave file. And that's because logic is not copying those file types to the project quite yet, because now we need to dig into a project setting. Because we didn't tell Logic to save these different file types when we first saved the project, we need to go to File, go down to Project Settings, and go down to Assets. Project settings are saved on a per project basis. These are all the different file types we could have copied to our project when we first saved the project. So let's go ahead and select all these different file types right now. All right, we're telling Logic, hey, Logic, I want to copy these file types now. The last thing we need to do now is save. So looking at the finder again, no master stereo file called feels like home. But if we now close the project settings, go to file, go down to save, feels like home master version two. Look at that, beautiful. Now it's been saved to the project. And that's because we finally told Logic, hey, every time I save this project, make sure to copy any files that are being used in the project. Don't just refer to those files anywhere they are on my Mac or external drive actually copy them to the project folder. So I know this project is completely self-contained. Okay, so we've copied all the necessary files to the project. We know we have everything we need. Now, how do we clean up our projects of any excess, any extra files, any bloat that just aren't relevant to the project anymore? First, I'm gonna delete the stereo file that I brought into the project initially by selecting the region and track, clicking delete on my Mac's keyboard. 
And then I'm going to go to file and save the project. Then I'm going to go to file, go down to project alternatives, and we're going to save a new alternative, which will be called archive example number one. From here, we're going to get rid of a couple other files, maybe Vox one and two, and maybe sampler. And we'll save once again using command S. So we know one project alternative has more files than the other. And in both project alternatives, we have removed some tracks and regions from the tracks area. So let's open the project browser using key command F. We're going right up to this button in the upper right hand corner and looking under the project tab. The project browser will show you all of the audio files and the regions in your project. Here's the audio file. And here are any regions that are referencing that audio file. And we can see with that very first audio file that there's a warning. And that's because we skipped over it when we had to search for that file across our system. We can hold option and collapse all these files down. And what we're going to do is we're going to go up to edit and we're going to select all the unused files in the project browser. As you can see, the three tracks that I eliminated from our two project alternatives are selected in the project browser meaning that these files are in the audio files folder. They've been saved to the project, but they're not being used in the actual project itself. So they're just taking up space. Well, in theory, the next step we would take would be to go up to file, go down to project management and clean up. And the cleanup option allows us to delete any unused files, backups, and media browser files. Backups, in this case, are what you would find under file, and revert to. It's every time you save, you create a backup and you can revert to different save states. So just real quick, let me use command S and save a couple times. Go back to file and revert to, and we can now see we have five different backups. So when we go to file project management and clean up, we can choose to delete those backups. But when we choose to not delete those backups, we can't delete the unused files, but we can choose to delete the backups, but leave alone those unused files. In this case, I want to delete these three unused files from my project. So let's click OK. Now that's kind of weird. Seems like nothing happened, right? We still see these references to these three files right here in the project browser. And if we even right click or hold control and click one of the files and ask to show these files in the finder. Oh, crumb, there they are. Box one, box two feels like home. Well, that's a problem. So let's go ahead. Let's go to edit. Let's select all the unused files and let's go back to edit and go down to delete. So we haven't deleted these files. If we go back to the finder, they're still there. Feels like home, Fox one and two. But what has happened is, is we removed the reference to those files from the project itself. At which point we can now save and go to file and go down to project management, clean up. Let's try this again. Oh, interesting. Unused file feels like home. We can remove this. We can delete this from the project entirely. However, where are those vocal files? Well, that's because our first project alternative is still using those vocal files. It's still referencing them. It actually has them in the tracks area. So thankfully, Logic knows enough to say, hey, okay, neither project alternative is using this master file, so let's get rid of it. But one of the project alternatives is still using those two vocal files. So I won't include that in this cleanup dialog. Let's take a look at the finder. Feels like home. Let's click OK. Take a look again. Feels like home is gone. And if we go back to file project alternatives and open the original alternative, there's that original file that was missing from our project that we skipped over. Let's go ahead and search for it this time. All right, let's bring that into the project. Oh, look at that. Feels like home. That's because the very first project alternative was still referencing that file. Let's just skip that for now. Okay. So let's save. Let's expand the waveform view. Let's open the project browser. And here are those vocal files for project alternative number one. And as I select them in the tracks area, they are selected in the project browser, but feels like home, but it's missing because we deleted it from the most recent alternative. But thankfully, it's not really important to this project. So let's select it. Let's go to edit and let's delete. Then the reference has been removed from the project browser. We can save. Let's get rid of the vocal files now. Edit, select unused. Edit. Let's go ahead and delete. Save. File. Project management. Clean up.
Well, look at that. Those vocal files that were removed from their most recent project alternative, but were not available to remove from the project folder completely. Well, now they're available if we so choose. And obviously you can make this a lot easier if you're at the end of a project by going to file, going to project alternatives and removing any earlier versions that are just not necessary anymore because the project has been complete. Let's click done. Let's save, let's quit. And the last step here in the finder, we're gonna say this project is complete. It's ready to be archived away. Personally, I just drag folders to external drives like so, and it'll copy. But if you wanna take an extra layer of precaution just to be safe, you can right click or control and click that project package or folder and go right down to compress that project. Logic will create a zipped or compressed copy of that project folder. And when you compress a file or folder, you're basically closing the door behind you and locking it. You're saying, this project is not accessible, it's not available to be open, to be looked at until I personally decide to open it and look at it. So you can then copy that compressed version to your external drive for archiving. But of course, if later on you decide, hey, I need to get into that project, what's going on in there? Well, you just double click, your Mac will open up that project as a copy, and then you can pop open that project as you see fit, and everything should be there if you followed these steps. So there you have it. I know it's a ton of information, but it's such important information when we're talking about keeping your projects safe so you can open them anytime in the future. Have a great new year. Thanks so much for being a subscriber, for watching the videos, the likes, the comments, the emails, the good vibes. I appreciate it all. I'm always here for you for anything you need when it comes to Logic Pro. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the new year. Take care.